Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Cannibal Farmhouse. <laughs> oh, nice. Today we're going to be doing 1982's House on Sorority Row. And this one was a request from Relic. Mark Rossman did the uh, directing for this. He was supposed to direct the movie Mutant, but he was fired from that, and they put somebody else on the project, and he just decided to do Disney movies, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Mutant, you got in the VHS raffle a couple That's of right. weeks ago. That's right. If you haven't watched that episode, click the link above. This movie stars Catherine McNeil, and she was in another horror movie, Monkey Shines. Eileen Davidson is also in this, and she was probably mostly known for Young and the Restless and several other daytime TV shows. <laughs> Harley Jane Kozak is in this, and she was in Arachnophobia. Another horror movie she was in was I Spit on Your Grave 3. <laughs> yeah. So school is out at university. Everybody's clearing out of the sorority house. It's time to go back home. But there's a group of girls that actually want to stay at this sorority house and they want to throw a big party, signal off the end of the year, cutting loose. <laughs> cut her loose! <laughs> cut her loose! <laughs> Getting high off your shit, Angel! Okay, I'll cut her loose! <laughs> But somebody's got to be a big party pooper, Miss Slater, right? She's the sorority mother of the house. She busts in on the whole party. You guys have to clear out. No party. Nothing's going to go on. I want you guys out of here. So right away, they're kind of pissed off. Fucking Mrs. Slater, you yeah. know? She's what a bitch. Old, old bitch. Yeah. Vicky ends up bringing her boyfriend back to the sorority house to kind of get busy, you know? And on the waterbed, no less, yeah. which super dates the movie, too. Miss Slater hears that something's going on, right? Busts open into the room and fucking pops that waterbed with the cane. What a fucking mess everywhere. Oh, yeah, like, oh, Christ. So Vicky is fucking royally pissed off by this point. She wants to get back at this Miss Slater. The girls kind of hatch this scheme to kind of pull a prank on her around the swimming pool outside, which is this grungy-ass fucking pool. That Slater never cleans. Yeah, and there's just all this slime and shit floating in it. Pull a gun on Miss Slater, right? And I guess scare the shit out of her and get her in the pool. The prank kind of starts off on the right foot, shoots one of the girls with blanks, and when she turns the gun on Miss Slater and shoots her, there's real bullets in the gun. Right away, the girls start fucking freaking out, right? They're all going, shit, what are we going to do with her? The party is going to be going on pretty soon. What, yep. what we got to hide this body. They wrap the body in the, these blankets, and they just leave the body in the pool. The worst place to hide <laughs> a body. Like, you're going to go retrieve it later. It's going to be all soggy uh, and yeah. bloated. <laughs> and, uh, like, no, not the pool. Anywhere else but the pool. Yeah. So it's party time at the sorority house, too, right? They even got a super 80s band yeah. going. All those shitty 80s guys <laughs> the party <laughs> yeah just a random guy from the party kind of walking around in the woods right into the throat this cane that mrs slater was using to walk around so the girls see that these stupid idiot boys <laughs> all want to get in the pool they're like oh shit well the body's in there so they figure well the detour people from going to the pool they're gonna shut off the breaker for the pool light. Stevie goes down into the basement where the breakers are, gets killed in the basement by someone with that same cane. There's these three guys, let's go swimming in the pool, and they strip down to their underwear. Yeah, tidy whities <laughs> And one of the guys is kinda bent over looking in the pool, and the other guy just boots him in. <laughs> And all that sludge yeah. shit. In the meantime, the girls go to the pool and notice that the lights aren't turning off like they should be. The body is no longer in there. It's gone. They assumed that Slater actually survived the gunshot and she got out of the pool. So they all split up to try to find Miss Slater. Morgan goes to Miss Slater's room to see if she's there and this body falls out of the attic that's <laughs> wrapped in all these towels. How did the body get up there? Maybe she wasn't dead and she somehow got her way up to the attic and she died up in the attic. They're not really sure, right? Think of something to do with this body. So. A couple of girls decide, well, they're going to throw it in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Katie decides to go up into the attic. Creepy clown toys. Birthday cards. 
signed to an Eric. So it seems like someone's actually been living up in this attic. In the meantime, all the girls start getting killed off one by one as they try to dispose of Slater's body. Katie finds this medical alert bracelet on the ground and it actually is Miss Slater's. Ever since they decided to do this prank on Miss Slater, Katie's been against the whole thing. She was against the prank, yeah. she was against hiding the body, so she's kind of had enough. She doesn't want to hide the fact that they accidentally killed her anymore. So she calls the number on the medical alert bracelet. This doctor picks up the phone and it ends up being Miss Slater's psychiatrist. The psychiatrist comes over and Katie tells him the whole story. Shows him the attic. The psychiatrist tells her a little story. And that's where we're going to end the plot. If you want to see what happens at the end of House of Sorority Row and what the story is behind this attic, keep watching the movie. First thing about this movie, I think, is the title itself. The title... And the picture on the VHS tape, you might think that it's a sleazy exploitation kind of movie, right? Yeah. Lots of boobs. Lots, lots of sex. Yeah, yeah, you know, and like a lot of dumb women running around, right, with their tops off and shit. This movie is the 100% complete opposite of that. A fucking smart, smart mystery slasher movie. The story is really good. It's a good story. There's great mystery in this movie. What is Miss Slater hiding in the attic? Why is she so weird? Why does she want people out of the sorority house by this certain date? The misdirection is great. You see her slash the waterbed with the cane. So that's kind of established. And then the first kill is with the cane. Mm -hmm. But you don't really see who's holding the cane. You're not sure, is it Slater? Did she really die when the body falls out of the attic? Is it her body? Yeah. Because they don't actually look at it. They just assume that it's her. Is it one of the girls that's maybe doing this? That's maybe yeah. picking each one of them off one by one because yeah. the one of the girls doesn't agree, you know, with what's going on? You don't know. Right. It, it could be anybody in the whole house and, and in this whole situation. Great characters. Driven by a female cast. They're all strong and they all have something to add to the movie. And each one of them adds a little more to the plot. Great actors too, like there's not one bad performance, you believe all these characters. I know to get like seven, I think there's seven main characters of the, the girls, the group of friends, you know, to get seven really solid actresses yeah. in a slasher movie like this. And I like how the performances aren't like over the top or campy, it doesn't have that 80s slasher camp to it like you do in the Friday the 13th type movies where everyone's right. like a caricature. Yeah. There's no caricatures, they're just believable college girls. You exactly, know? yeah. And the comedy for this movie is so subtle and so well done. It doesn't overshadow what's going on in the movie, right? It doesn't it's... overshadow the horror. I love the, the reoccurring joke with the pool. <laughs> right. you know, they mention it early on. Ah, that disgusting pool. Slater never cleans it out. And that's where Slater ends up dying is in that disgusting pool that she never <laughs> cleans. You know? Right. And then, of course, you get those three morons yeah. that want to go swimming in the and, damn yeah. thing. The clumsiness of the girls is kind of funny, too, because, like, every decision they make with disposal of this body is a horrible decision. Putting it in the pool is an awful choice and then yeah. when they put it in the garbage and they're trying to like wheel that, that huge bin, that huge <laughs> garbage bin and they hit the cop car with it. It's yeah. good situational humor that doesn't take away from the horror. The setting where the movie takes place is fantastic. Weird passageways and places where somebody could be hiding. Lots of rooms. Yeah, yeah. where somebody can pop out then disappear and be in another part of the house. When you see a slasher take place in a sorority house, it's supposed to be big, there's lots of rooms, it makes sense. As opposed to like you see a slasher like Scream, the house at the end, some big mansion. It's a little yeah. bit less believable someone lives in this mansion than girls in a sorority house. Plus you can relate to the girls too, right? right. Because none of them own this place. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't relate to some rich asshole that lives in this big mansion. Yeah, right? you almost want them to be killed, yeah. right? The pacing in this movie is really good. Just the way the mystery unfolds really keeps it going. They feed you some clues. With the clues, there's a bit more mystery. As it's unfolding, you're still wanting more. You need to know more. And then when the doctor shows up, and he sedates Katie. Why? Yeah. What's his stake in this? The score for this movie is fucking great. It's done by Richard Band, a brother of Charles Band, scored this movie, scored Reanimator, scored a lot of Full Moon production movies. It's probably one of my favorite orchestral slasher scores. It's fucking great. Yeah, oh yeah. It's probably his best 
score, I think. It's yeah. really fucking good. It's up there with, like, Friday the 13th as being a creepy, you know, get, get your blood boiling score. Yeah, it's sophisticated, really. Yeah. Not just your do 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 no. No. Do, 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 do. <laughs> no, no, not at all. It's, it's great. Oh. The effects are fucking great, too, in this movie, and they're very subtle, though. It's not gory in the least, really, right? Um, and it, it doesn't mean to be. It gets the point across with what it does. You don't see every kill. No. But the ones you do see are good. And you don't need to see every yeah. kill, right? Yeah. You just need to know that it happened. And then certain things later, you see the aftermath, right? Right. With the head in the toilet, which is fucking great. Because it's her real head in, like, <laughs> yeah. in a toilet. <laughs> don't see her actually get decapitated, right? right? It's just the knife goes in her neck, which is good too. That's a great yeah. effect. And then you see the aftermath. It's like, holy shit. The killer actually cut her fucking head off. Right off. <laughs> yeah. Just take him right off. The hilt of the cane go through that guy's throat. It looks fucking oh, great. That's a fucking good kill. You know, you don't need to see every kill. Not every kill needs to be super gory. As long as the aftermath is good. Sometimes we'll complain, oh, this movie didn't have enough gore. But if the movie's good enough without it, you don't need it. Exactly. And this movie is good enough without a bunch of bloody kills. Yeah, it's the same thing with music, right? If the movie is good enough, if the scenes are good enough, you don't necessarily need music in the, in certain scenes to lift it up. Right, exactly. The conversation for another day, if we ever talk about <laughs> stigmata, <laughs> fuck, there's not one scene in that movie that doesn't have music. It's like, fuck, give me a break! And it's all the, that contemporary new shit, yeah, too. Uh, it's like, Billy oh, Corgan, yeah. fuck. The ending for this movie is fucking great. Without giving it away, very open-ended ending, <laughs> yeah. uh, after Katie gets sedated, she starts hallucinating, and it's like, whoa, what's happening? And yeah. suddenly you're like, whoa! Again, there's more misdirection, right? right? Yeah. Is that really happening, or is she just fucking seeing this, or what? And it is an open-ended ending, and it's, it's fucking great. I think it's a classic slasher ending. Really creepy, too. There's one scene at the end where it's like, Ugh. When we did our top 10 final girls, I think Katie should have been in that. Totally forgot. But yeah. she's definitely up there. Very underrated movie in general. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have a very high score in IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes or whatever. I don't know, this is a fucking great slasher. It's one of the better 80 slashers. It really is. It, yeah. it does its job. And it's not tacky. It's nope. not campy. It's just a solid fucking horror movie. It's sophisticated and it's smart. So definitely, if you haven't seen uh, House and Sorority Row, it's totally worth your time. Oh, if you like classic slashers, if you like Halloween, yeah. you know, if you like serious slashers, there could have been a sequel. Yeah, yeah, it's too bad, actually, yeah. but uh, oh well. Yeah. This, we'll have to make do with the one, as perfect yeah. as it is. So until next time, check out this movie and... Keep drinking. Keep drinking.